Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, Toby Salgado here, Super Agents Live. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, If this is your first time here, welcome. Let me tell you quickly what we do on this show. We talk about how to build your business. And we talk about, really, this show is about entrepreneurship through the lens of a real estate agent. If you don't sell real estate, that's okay. We, You will get nuggets here. Now, today's episode is a little bit different, man. This guy doesn't sell real estate. This guy owns gold mines. This guy has started multi-level marketing companies. I mean, he, he's built businesses where he makes 80 grand a month on a passive basis. And, and really, you know what? Look, building a business is all about making new contacts. It's about And how do you make new contacts? You meet new people. We talk about how to meet new people. We talk about how to add value to that relationship, how to build a strong foundation, how to become valuable in that relationship so that when they come up and your name makes sense, that they remember you and call you. Uh, we, and, and we talk about how to face your fears. And, and facing your fears is the difference between living a life of mediocrity and living a life by design. So super excited to have this guest. His name is Matthew Britt. I, I, he's actually a friend of mine. Uh, we actually were just in Colorado. We were hanging out, we were doing mountain, we were riding downhill, uh, doing mountain bike riding. Did a bunch of stuff. So uh, if you don't know, a couple things real quick before we get to the episode. We all know the best kind of referral is one from our sphere or farm. But how do we stay top of mind? Now, most people, they take a three-pronged approach, right? They door knock in their farm, they call people, and they mail them. Most people fall down by not getting to their people, their sphere, their farm. They don't get them engaging content. And look, you know, sure, we can list them a postcard. Or we can send an article that we think is going to be of interest to them. Our new sponsor, Discover Publications, takes that one step further. For just slightly more than the cost of a stamp, Discover Publications creates a completely customized newspaper. Now, they'll go out and they'll curate content, or you can create your own. All of my sponsors are white labeled. Now, I called, prior to having them on the show, I called some of Discover Publications clients. And I talked to this one guy, and he does some interesting things. He'll go out and interview restaurants that are in his farm, in his sphere. He creates a write-up. He, interestingly enough, resells advertising in his own newspaper to his trusted network, whether that's the plumber or the insurance agent. And by the way, this guy has 60% market penetration. He told me the paper has cemented those numbers. If you're interested, go check out discoverpubs.com. Let me know what you think. To get to the housekeeping uh, really quickly, um, if you don't know, the f- the hashtag for the show, which is a big follow train, is just tweet out, unpack that idea. That's it. Um, I, some of our audience members have gotten uh, 100, 200, 300 followers. So uh, go ahead and use that. The second thing, if you don't know, is... Um, we cut a deal with Bob Corcoran and, and the Corcoran Coaching Group. These guys are very smart guys, somebody that I personally respect. I learn a lot every time I talk to, uh, talk to Bob. He has offered my audience, you guys, a free coaching call with his group. You can reach out to, uh, if you want that, if you think you are ready to, to level up, call, I'm sorry, not call, email Bubba at CorcoranCoaching.com and he'll set you up for, uh, for a, a free coaching call. Um, and lastly, if you are doing 100 transactions and want to move to 200 or 300, we're putting people on the radio. We're only putting one person in every market. It's not, not – listen, guys, I'm getting a lot of emails from, from you guys saying, hey, listen, I'm doing 20. I want to do 100. You got to have a team. You got to have backup. So, so I, I, I really want to find people that are doing 100 that want to get two or three. So if you're interested, go to our site superagentslive.com. Check out the dominate with a radio button and, uh, and, uh, let's see if you're a good fit. All right. Hey, let's get to the show. Sure. Today on the show, we're doing something a little different, man. You know, as you know, this show is about entrepreneurship through the lens of a real estate agent. Now here's the deal. I've met so many fantastic people 
over the last you know three or four months while I'm doing this show, and my experience is sort of taking me a little bit outside of real estate. And I've learned a ton of great things from people who don't sell real estate. So today is a guy I met. I actually got to spend a weekend with this guy. We rode mountain bikes together and we played Frisbee together. A really, really cool guy. Very, very crazy, interesting background. So we're going to talk to him about what he's done. And by the way, this guy at one point was making like 80 grand a month doing, doing all this stuff. So I'm thrilled to welcome my guest today, Matthew Britt. Hey, Matthew, thanks for taking the time out today. Hey, thanks, Toby, so much. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to a great interview with you. Awesome. Hey, so listen, Matthew, take a minute. Tell us a little bit about about yourself because you do have a pretty interesting background. Yeah, so, you know, growing up, uh, I was definitely very focused on athletics, and that was kind of my passion and uh, dream to be a professional hockey player and uh, made it very far in that world. I ended up winning a national championship as a hockey player in Canada, and uh, in that time, I uh, Closing out the end of my career, I actually separated both my shoulders three times. So that kind of ended my dream of becoming a professional hockey player. So I had to resort to uh, taking the skills that I learned from athletics, such as you know the hard work, discipline, practice, the focus, etc. And I decided to apply it towards entrepreneurship. And I made the transition from uh, you know being uh, focused purely on athletics from a sport perspective to moving into the personal training world, and did very well in that aspect. I ended up running a multi-million dollar fitness club. Uh, built a team of about 60 staff, had 21 personal trainers that were working for me and, you know, did very well there. And my passion for entrepreneurship just kept growing and growing and growing. So back in 2010, after six years of being full-time in the personal training world, I walked away from that career cold turkey, left, uh, you know, about $80,000 a year as a, as an employee, you know, and uh, go full-time into entrepreneurship. And uh, as you said, Toby, you know, I ended up being very successful within that realm in a very short period of time. And, you know, just under uh, two years, I was able to get my income over $80,000 a month. And uh, I was, you know, 32 years old at that time and, uh, you know, kind of living the dream and created a great residual passive income for myself, which allowed me to go and do a bunch of other things along the way. Uh, now owning uh, six different companies and having a ton of fun, making a difference in the world. Yeah, and I, and I wish we had more time. We actually got on this call a little bit late, so we so it's a little bit truncated. Um, but that's okay. And, and again, I, I wish I could, you own parts of gold mines, right? You, you have all this crazy stuff. But so hold on a second. So let's go back. So I have found a very clear um, correlation between people who who play sports, right? Because you have to be disciplined, you have to work hard, and then you know bu- building successful companies. Tell us about, uh, you know, so you took this discipline, took this hard work. What is the thing? I want to talk about the, the, that thing because, because I think people have preconceived notions. That thing that got you to 80 grand a month. Tell us a little bit about that thing because here's where I want to tie it. I'll let, I'll let you make the connection later. But, you know, everything is about networking. Everything is about meeting people. Everything is about lead generation. And, and if you can meet people, uh, you can be successful in anything. So tell us what that was and then, and then kind of migrate it wherever you want to take it, Brett Matthew. Sure. Well, what, uh, you know, to me, like you said, networking is everything and, and who you know and who knows you really can lead you to a ton of opportunity. And that was something that uh, I really understood at a very young age. And that, that came from us moving around uh, four different times uh, when I was a kid. So I was put into scenarios where just by, you know, not by choice, but by force, I had to meet new people. And what I took from that was, Yes, meeting new people is very important, but even more important than that is taking those relationships and building upon them and becoming valuable to those people that you meet. And you can do that value by you know, just really putting an emphasis on your own personal growth and development and keeping an open mind to things because so many people have so many valuable things to offer back to you, but you often don't see them if your mind is closed. So my education uh, from the personal development side of stuff and from the networking things came, you know, just from being forced to move around and then being open to, uh, to learning as much as I possibly could so I could become a valuable resource for the people that I met. And then I maintain the strong disciplinary action uh, of maintaining those relationships, keeping in contact with those people, finding unique ways to add value to their life, you know, just checking in, whether it's through a Facebook message or a text or a phone call or send them a card or, you know, uh, suggesting a lunch or whatever that is, just to maintain that relationship, maintain that friendship, so that down the road, 
you know, if something came across their plate where they thought of me, uh, they would definitely contact me or whatever that is. Or if I had something to give back to them, I would reach out to them and, you know, really build that uh, strong foundation for a long lasting friendship. Yeah, well, look, so you, you over and over in that, in, in that little rant that you did there, you, you mentioned it one thing over and over again, but you mentioned it a few different ways, right? You said, hey, I want to be a valuable resource. I want to add value to their life, right? I want to do some. So here's the thing. There's two pieces, right? You got shoved into, well, I don't know if you were military. I don't know why you're moving around a bunch, but, um, but you moved around so you, ought, you had to make new friends. Now, making new friends takes courage, and, and a lot of people out there, people listening to this episode right now, don't have that courage, right? And even if they do, even if they, they muster up the courage to talk to, you know, hey, if they saw a picture of you in, in line, you know, Matthew's this, you know, big, burly MMA fighter looking guy with a beard, right? You know, with tattoos, right? Even if somebody mustered up the courage to talk to you, Matthew, um, how, you know, most people go, well, I can't add value to this guy's life. You know, this guy's, this, he, he works out. I don't, right? I don't know. Like, so, so talk to us about that courage. Like, what do you think holds people back from those two things? You know, talk, you know, t- talking with more people, random people, number one. Num- and number two, th- th- believing that they can't add value to that person. Hey, the reality is everybody has fear. You know, I do. So do you. Everybody has it. The difference between the people who end up, we'll call quote unquote, making it and those who kind of stay stagnant in their life, only wishing they had more is their willingness to break through that fear because we're all going to feel it. We all are going to have that in our bodies at times. We get nervous, we get scared or we feel a little bit of fear or hesitation about taking action on something that we want. And the choice is simple. You either do it and face that fear head on or you don't, and you continue leading a life of mediocrity that you really wish that you weren't in. And, uh, you know, the way to get over that is simple practice. Mm. Uh, you can start small. You can just start working on saying hello to people. Mm. And you know, listen, and, um, I'm not an ultra outgoing person. It's contrary to what some people may think, is that it doesn't mean that you have to talk to every single person that you meet. What I found for myself, being a little more conservative as an individual, is that I put myself in scenarios where I find and meet people who are interested in things that I am interested in. For example, we'll start with something really simple. I like to play hockey. That was a childhood passion. I still play hockey today. I know when I'm in the dressing room with people who are also playing hockey that we have something in common that we can build a relationship on, that commonality. So my suggestion for everyone out there listening is that you put yourself in scenarios where you can be around people who have some sort of similar interest to you, and that builds that simple bridge that can strike up a conversation. From there, it's up to you to make that relationship flourish and grow, Um, but you're going to feel that fear regardless. So just find a way to put yourself in a scenario where you can break that fear down a little bit and also be willing to face that fear. If you're not going to face that fear, you're going to be stuck. You're going to, it's not going to go away. It's only going to go away when you face it head on and practice on getting over that fear and doing it on a religious basis. Yeah, no, I love that. And look, and here's the deal, right? So I, if I'm going to elaborate on that a little bit, you know, it, it, first of all, it's, it's uh, I have a lot of people that, you know, super top performing people that come on this show. That's one thing they say, Matthew, they say, you know what? I try to do something that scares me every day, right? So face that fear and facing that fear, just like, you know, just like working out, right? Just like building your biceps or something, right? It takes practice. It takes, and it's going to hurt, man, while you're doing it. But the yeah. more you do it, the, it's like, it, decision-making is the same thing. The more decisions you make, the easier they become. Uh, so yeah. I, I do love that. I do love that. The, so you, you were saying, put yourself in a scenario. And I would say, you know, put yourself in, uh, find opportunities for you to meet other people. Uh, for you, yeah. it's, for you, it's hot. What, you know, for, for other people, you know, I mean, look, we're, we're in America, Matthew. I mean, I've, ne- I've never played, I've ice skated, I've never hockey, played hockey. But, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I guess, w- let's say, uh, put somebody out there, they're, they're 35 years old. Um, you know, I mean, what, what are some, where can they find opportunities to, to meet similar minded people? I know it might be a crazy question, but what, tell me what your, your thoughts are. No, it's really, it's really simple. Think about the things that you like and put yourself in scenarios where you're around other people who like those similar things. We can go through all kinds of stuff, right? I'm, as an entrepreneur, I was going out to networking, breakfast, lunches, mm. any kind of event, personal growth event. I like, I like the bookstore because if we go to the bookstore and I start looking in the, you know, the health section, 
and I see some other people that are in the health section, obviously they're interested in health, or they're looking to learn something about the health world. Or if, uh, you know, you go to the, if you like to read romance novels, go to the romance novel section. Someone there is looking at a book in the romance section, and you like that too, now you have something you can talk about. See, it's, it's a matter of finding things that you love to do, putting yourself out into those places, doing those things. If you love to train dogs, Go to a school where they train dogs, and you'll meet other people who like to train dogs, right? Yeah. There's all kinds of those things out there. It's just thinking about what do you as an individual like. From there, go and do those things, and you will find other people with similar interests to you. I love that. And, you know, look, here's – here's and, and for some of you, you know, we're, we're 11 minutes into this. And for, for – if somebody out there, they're like, oh, crap, man, I want to know Legion, right? Because, I'm I, you know, I'm trying to build my real estate business. I don't want to listen to Matthew talk about meeting people. And going to a bookstore and meeting people isn't going to help my real estate business. And I would say you're totally wrong because – I went too. Yeah, everything is about meeting new people. Every every person, right? And I just did a Google Hangout on this. It's you know, lead generation is different from prospecting. You know, you need to put as many you need to need to meet as many people as you can, and f- just like you said earlier, Matthew, right? Foster that relationship, and sooner or later, right? Either they're gonna you can provide a product or service to them, or they're gonna know someone that uh, that you can help out with that product or service. Let me break in here with a message from our sponsor. Our sponsor, Discover Publications, will create a customized, branded, 12-page newspaper that will be sent out to your farm and sphere. Now, this paper is cheaper than you think. For slightly more than the cost of a stamp, you can start sending out curated content and always stay top of mind. Never lose a deal again because that prospect just happened to forget that you were in real estate or misplaced your number. Go check them out at discoverpubs.com. Now, yes. So, Matthew, you are you're 32 years old. Um, I'm, I'm actually I just I just turned 35, Toby. Oh, 35. Oh, got it. Well, hey, look, congratulations. Uh-huh. You you look great. I thought you're I thought you said you're 32. That's okay. 35. So you, uh, the point that I was making is you are firmly a millennial. Now, here's what here's what millennials do, right? I see over and I, I'd love to get your take on this, but you know. Uh, millennials uh, early on, right? I'm I'm getting obviously getting into social media, right? Mm-hmm. I see too many people. If they want to meet other people, they go, "Crap, you know what? I'm not going to go to the bookstore. I'm going to do it on social media. I'm going to do it on Facebook. I'm going to do it on Instagram." Um, mm-hmm. You know, why do people hide behind social, or can people make social work for them in, in this regard to meet new people and to build a relationship? I would say 100 percent, yes, they can. Uh, but I believe that if you're going to use social media, you use that to build at least the connection. And then the important part is to take it off of social media, whether that's get on the phone, get on a Google Hangout or Skype, or if they're even in your own city or you travel to that city, try and get out and make that person a person contact. Because let's be serious. You know, with the social media world today, you can hide behind that. And people can be not who they say they are. It's very easy to fake who you are in social media. But when you get out in the public, now you have a chance to look a person in the eye, get a feel for who they are, their being, et cetera, and have a chance right there to build a solid relationship. So using social media to do initial networking can be very effective. I do it. I've been able to build a massive following all over the place on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera. I have met tons of great people through those things, but I do this every time I take that relationship from the social media world and I move it offline to create a real solid relationship with people. And that is a trick, man. That is a trick online to offline. It's, it's so, um, uh, a girl named Kelly Mitchell first told me that and she, I don't know, she, I don't know if you'll know who that is, but she's, uh, anyhow. Um, so look, I, the, the business that you, you, Okay, let's let's go back to the beginning. You're this person. You, you love health and fitness, right? So your natural uh, first step was to get in, you know, start running health clubs. You did that. You're successful mm-hmm. at it. Mm-hmm. That next thing, right? It's let's talk about a little bit about Vaisalis. And I think here's how the the, uh, the the obviously the connection about Vaisalis is meeting people, right? So so tell us a little bit about about what that is. And and again, two things. One. How you went from making eighty grand a year to eighty grand a month, and two, right? You pretty much stepped out of that, right? So, well, like, what's the mindset around building this business and then letting someone else take it over? I know that's too long of a question, but take off. Okay, well, yeah, I got into uh, the network marketing industry. Some people may know it as multi-level marketing or MLM, and 
Um, what I what I found in that world was there's a lot of preconceived notions about what it is. There's a lot of misinformation, poor understanding, and even ignorance. And here's uh, here's something I think is very important: keeping an open mind. Right? When I talked about that briefly earlier, there's often things we don't know we don't know, and we often get told stuff by by people who haven't done what we want to do, and we take those things to heart and we believe them. And my recommendation is never listen to anybody who hasn't successfully achieved that which you want to achieve, right? So for me, when I found out about network marketing, you know, I had been told before by my parents in specific and by friends to stay away from it. But what I decided was I'm going to go do my own research. I'm going to find people who have had success in that industry and I'm going to learn from them. And I wanted to know, do people make money? Do people lose money? And what does it take to be a person that makes money? And, and then the next question was, what was I going to be? Right? So I decided from my information, from my own education, that I could find some people who have been successful in that model. I was going to follow what they taught, apply to what they taught, and take action on it. And that made all the difference. That, uh, you know, that time in that industry, and I'm still involved in it today, uh, that time has, you know, changed my life dramatically, and it's allowed me to become a full-fledged entrepreneur, making a great passive income. That's allowed me to go and start a variety of other companies, a variety of other investments, etc. cetera. Um, but that was, again, a transition that I made by keeping an open mind and being willing to put myself into uncomfortable situations, being willing to hear no thousands and thousands of times to find a few hundred yeses, right? The more you hear no doesn't mean no forever. All it means, in my opinion, is not right now. Yeah. Right. Everybody does things in their life for their reasons, not yours. Just because you're excited about something doesn't mean they're going to be. Who knows what they have going on? So what you need to be willing to do is give people information. So if you're a realtor on the phone, you need to go out there and meet as many people as humanly possible. Talk to them about selling their house. Talk to them about buying a new house, whatever that is. And just because someone isn't ready to sell their house right now doesn't mean they won't be willing to sell their house or ready to sell their house in a year, two years, five years. And if you're good at keeping that relationship, if you add value to their life, if they trust you, if they like you, if they believe you can help them, when that five-year time comes and they are ready to sell their house, who are they going to contact, right? It's the person they have the relationship with. Remember, people always do business with people they know, they like, and they trust. If they don't know you like you trust you, they'll never do business with you. And if you're willing to get out there and make relationships, build value, be, be a person who people know, like, and trust and stay on top of their mind, when the time comes for them to do business with you, you'll be the person they think of. They will come calling, and you'll be ready to answer that call. But it won't happen unless you put yourself into those uncomfortable situations and you're willing to hear a no over and over and over again. Because, again, I'll say this, I think it's so important for all of you that are listening to hear. No does not mean no. No means not right now. I love it, man. And, and you, you said something earlier that was super, super tweetable. You, you, you talk fast like I do, dude. So I couldn't write it down. But you're, you're like, I'm not going to listen to someone who hasn't achieved who what, – what did you yeah, say? I don't so, know if you remember it. Yeah, so never take advice from someone who has not achieved that which you're trying to achieve. Love so, it. you know, prime, prime example is if I was going to go into the fitness industry and I talk to my obese cousin who's not uh, – obviously not fit, and they say, oh, you know how hard that is? You can't make any money in fitness. Well, is that a good person for me to listen to? Right? You're, and I'm sure all of you that are listening right now are saying, no, well, that's ridiculous. Well, how many times have you heard that from – you know, your aunt who's not in real estate saying you can't make a lot of money in real estate. We all know there's people that make tens of millions, hundreds of millions, even billions of dollars in real estate. If they were to listen to their broke aunt who said not to do real estate, they wouldn't be in that scenario. But instead, if they went and listened to someone who's made tens of millions of dollars in real estate, that person would have a very different re belief about what real estate can do. And that's a person that can show you how to get that same thing done. So take advice from people who've successfully achieved that which you want to achieve the other ones are just noise to that uh, tweet it out guys i mean i love that hey so look but so let me ask you this so um again a lot when it comes to network marketing or whatever a lot of people do have preconceived notions because of you know the first one which i forget what it's amway it was what it's called now it's not called anymore and and, and that model works and so many people so many especially fitness products 
uh, have uh, have uh, have popped up around. Now, here's what I do know. Here's what I do know around network marketing, and I'm going to parallel this against. I'm going to compare it against rather uh, real estate. Now, in real estate, you get your license, and if you get a license, I guarantee you, you're going to get a job, right? Because you're going to go to a broker, and all brokers know. New people are worth two or two to three transactions, and boom. Okay, mm-hmm. they, they're they're not going to put any energy into training you, as opposed to many, many, many of the of the, of these network. And this is not a spiel for network marketing, guys. I, I this is going to get you a question. Many network marketing firms, company, organizations, whatever you want to call them, they give fantastic training and support to their downline or to people in the organization. I mean, they bring in speakers. I mean, it is very raw. It's very like, like, you know, going to a Tony Robbins thing or so I've been told. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So do you think, would it be good training? Let's say somebody's out there, they're just getting their license. They kind of don't know what to do. Um, is there, do you think that it's a viable path to, to find uh, some network marketing organization and, and get the training and then use that training for their real estate business? Absolutely. 100%. You get hands-on, real-world business experience with minimal startup costs. That gives you tremendous opportunity for personal growth. And if we're talking about maintaining and building relationships, the more you grow as a person, um, and Jim Rohn says this best. I don't know if any of you have heard of Jim Rohn before. He's that uh, quote. He's basically touted as America's great business philosopher. Don't say it. No don't say it. That's me. I'm, I'm going to throw down a quote that it's on the show and tell me if it's the same one. You are the, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. That is not the one. Ah. That's a great one, too. The quote I'm thinking of is success is something you attract by the person you become. Oh. Success is something you attract by the person you become. If you are focused on becoming an attractive and successful person, you would you can get that by doing personal development and network marketing in my opinion is one of the greatest ways for you to get personal development by getting hands on coaching from someone who has done something before you that can teach you a lot of things and one of the most important that comes from it is the ability to network i have a gigantic network of people all across north america and into other countries in the world because i focused on building a network and that network pays me an incredible amount of money and allows me to be valuable to a lot of people and have great relationships with people, tremendous people that I've met from all over the place. And it's extremely valuable for a minimal cost. Like for me to get started in network marketing cost me a thousand dollars that I put on a credit card. Right. Right. If you understand, if you understand investing, when you use other people's money, which is what a credit card is, that's someone else's dollars. I was able to pay that credit card off within my first week. And from there, I have gone on to earn almost $2 million in network marketing. And that money, when you think about investing, that's an infinite return. Infinite return on your money. How's that for valuable? <laughs> it's allowed you to buy gold mines. Yeah, no, that, I mean, that it is. I mean, um, I'm glad you answered it that way. Uh, and, and look, and, and again, you were this, you, you were this meathead, right? Like you just, you're, you're the, people would see you as a meathead, right? In the gym, like yep, you're this guy, yep. <laughs> but, but yet you, you, you're a speaker. I mean, you've had the opportunity to speak in front of what, what's the biggest crowd you've spoken again in front of Matthew? About, about, about 15,000 people or so. Amazing. Amazing. So, yeah. um, uh, you know, and, and look, we're, I, dude, I'm so bummed. I'm so bummed we, we missed our first 30 minutes on the show. And maybe we should do, maybe we should do a second segment or something. Uh, but I want to take, um, I want to take a few minutes. You have a passion project we have to mention. Um, tell us a little bit about what it is and, uh, and, and then, and then we'll see however you wrap up and then we'll, we'll figure out how to go on from there. All right, awesome. Well, yeah, one of the uh, one of the things I've just been able to get started uh, back about five months ago now is a new project of mine. It's called Let's Hug It Out Promotions, and we we sell T-shirts, um, but really it's not about the T-shirts. And actually, one of the pieces of marketing material someone gets when they get a, a T-shirt is, is the first thing it says is this is not a shirt. And what what the shirt stands for, what the shirt is is a mission to spread hugs, positive vibes, and happiness around the world simply by wearing a shirt. And our focus as a company, our why, is to really just help make the world a better place, put smiles on people's faces, you know, spread the hugs, spread the positive vibes, spread the happiness around, because our world, in my opinion, really needs that. There's a lot of people out there who are stressed on a day-to-day basis. They're sick or diseased from 
you know, from their environmental issues, the food we're consuming, the lack of exercise, the mental pollution that we're suffering from. It's just, we're, we're, as far as I'm concerned, our world is in a, in a terrible state. You know, there, there is a lot of good stuff going on. We just don't get to see a lot of it because of our news outlets and the social media stuff. And uh, We just really want to help make the world a better place. And Let's Hug It Out is, is really focused on doing that. Uh, we've been in business now, like I said, about five months. Um, we are not partnered with specific charities per se, but we do have a focus to help raise money for different organizations. For example, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this ALS Ice Bucket Challenge that is going on. I was challenged by three different people to participate in that, and I decided you know, to do my challenge. I donated for 24 hours 100% of all the money that came in to Let's Hug It Out was going to ALS research. And in a 24-hour period of time, we, were, we raised over $1,500 you know, which has been a huge amount of money, but at the same time, that's 1500 bucks that ALS would not have had for research, and I'm sure it'll make uh, a great contribution to this organization. So let's check it out, guys. It's uh, on a mission to spread hugs, positive vibes, and happiness around the world simply by wearing a shirt, and I thank you, Tony, for allowing me to share a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, you joker. Um, you just called me Tony, and we, we spent three days together. <laughs> Jeez. No, and I'll, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Matthew, um, but uh, so the deal is this. I probably would not normally have brought it up, but, but I, I, I saw how that worked, right? We were, we were at, at Steamboat Springs. We're at the resort at the mountain, and some lady came up and said, what is that? And she was like, she was more than happy to, to – to give a hug, and maybe she needed it. I mean, yeah. Robin Williams just passed away. Mm-hmm. Did he need a hug? He might have. Yeah. So anyhow, hey Matthew, thanks for coming on. I, you know, I, I apologize that we got on late, and uh, I think you do have a, a ton of good stuff. I mean, you once you get going, dude, you, 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 you know, you were dropping some good nuggets. And so anyhow, um, let's wrap it up. Tell everybody where we can find you, and maybe we'll have you back on again, and we'll pick up where we left off. Hey, that would be amazing. And Toby, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, bring me on here. And it's unfortunate that we couldn't get the whole hour in, but I would be uh, definitely open to coming on board again. And, and then if everybody listening, you know, I was uh, I was definitely not this way before. I've done tremendous personal growth over the past uh, 11 years or so. I read my first book at 24 years old about personal growth. And from that point on, I'm now over 120 books that I've finished. I attend multiple personal growth and development events on a year-to-year basis. And I just continue to uh, focus on becoming a better version of myself so I can uh, you know, just be more valuable and, and do like that quote says, attract uh, success into my life. And uh, you know, just to uh, just to finally wrap up here, it's uh, it's a, it's such an honor to be on board here, and I would not be here today if it wasn't for me keeping an open mind and being focused on becoming a better person. And for all of you listening, this is available for you. There is no limits to what you can achieve in your life if you'll just spend the time and, most importantly, sacrifice for the short term to gain in the long term. There are so many distractions out there, so many shiny objects that can take away your focus, but if you're willing to sacrifice some of those things in the immediate, you can have all of those things as your life progresses. And there's a way for you to live a long, healthy life that's by focusing on taking care of your health, taking care of your mind, nurturing great relationships, being a good person, a good friend, and finding ways to contribute back to our world Everything is there for you to have and more. So that being said, guys, again, I really appreciate it, Toby, and I hope uh, hope everybody got some good, valuable nuggets out of this interview, and I look forward to potentially doing something again in the future. Yeah, man. No. Hey, thank you, Matthew. And I just, I'm telling you, man, I like – uh, I, that just that last thing. I mean, no, I know you just this fantastic, amazing clothes, but you know, you you just said something again, just very, very important, right? Number one, delay your gratification, right? It's you, you know, when people do scientists do studies on kids, the kids who cannot eat the Twinkie, right? They can delay their gratification because later they're going to get two. They'll go, those guys end up doing better in life. The other thing you said, mm-hmm. Matthew, was you said you said sacrifice, and you know, and Tony Robbins would say, you know, most people run towards pleasure and away from pain and if you can twitch switch that and run towards pain and not necessarily away from pleasure but run towards the pain of meeting that new person of putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation right of of, of going outside your comfort zones that's where you're going to win so yeah dude we, we need to get you you know what we need to do matthew and we have 30 more seconds what we need to do dude is really come up with sort of a a, a map because I, I know like you, there's so much that, that uh, you've had experience in. Let's map out what we should talk about and bring you on. Because uh, you know you definitely are motivational. And I, I, I believe my audience got a bunch out of it. Because I did. Good. My man. Good. All right, buddy. Thank go. you so much. 
If guys want to find me, you can find me on Facebook. It's Matthew Britt, just facebook.com slash Matthew Britt, M-A-T-T-H-E-W-B-R-I-T-T. There you go. You close it up, one second. It's over. All right, Matthew, talk to you soon, bud. Thank you. Let's go.